All right, what we're going to be doing today is putting on um, F90 equivalent high pressure fuel pumps. Uh, this is a 2013 BMW 650i um, X drive. Um, basically, been fully built as far as bolt ons. Um, I haven't went into the engine, I'm not going to go to that extent. Um, as you can see, it has a carbon fiber cold air intake on it um it has um dining intercoolers on it that's just what you can see visually so this is the fuel pump it has the new connection this is a 2013 so it has the old one um, on the vehicle so to upgrade for a 13 you have to um, swap out the um the connector on here i'll be doing that this is the wire harness that's the new style connector on it. And fuel gaskets, fuel pump gasket. So what you wanna do first is, uh, so yours might be a little different if you have the, the original um, air filter and, and things like that on here. Let's take that off. And if you never looked in here, these are your turbos in the middle of the V. So for a cold air intake, they have different styles. Some styles just come here. You take your uh, mounts off and it'll just come right up here. But the one I have, it loops up in the back, kind of like the original one. But this is carbon fiber, as you can see. And your fuel pumps are right underneath here on both sides so i'll be taking this off and see what kind of access i have all right i got the uh cold air duct out of the way i took it off all the way from here so hopefully i'll have enough clearance if not i'll have to take all of that off um the fuel line that's a 17 millimeter the allen that's the uh five millimeter i don't know if you can see it on here has a five and your connector is up there at the top that has to get switched over like i said this is a 13. uh they put the new styles some somewhere around in the 14s i don't know what month it was um there are other videos online but none had the exact uh well some had an n63 but it wasn't a 650 so it may have been a little different uh, like I said on here, I got just a couple of bolt-ons. I got the dining intercoolers. Those are the pure turbos uh, stage two um, So I'll come back once I get this out All right, I'm back. I got it. I got it out right here So I did take that this little duck off right here. It's just one bolt on top of the turbo can't see right now. There's a little bolt in there. But you can get to it if you come in here to the front. And it is this bolt right here. And that one is a T30. I'll call them star bit. T30. get that out then I took this boat out and then there's a little nut right there I took out that little nut is an eight millimeter and the other boat I don't think it's a 12 I don't, think it's that big. I don't remember I got it over here somewhere I don't know if I'm looking through all of that but I took both of those out, and that'll give me a little more play to get the gas line out. This side, I believe it's the, no, that's the low pressure. This is the high pressure going down here to the fuel rail. And that's your gasket right there. I'll get that out in a minute. But to get this off, kind of tricky so I had got 
you can either use two picks or one but right up in here I just put it in here and pried that clip out what they want you to do is put pressure on the top and the bottom of this but it's hard to get your finger at the bottom so you just get something that will pry this out just a little bit and pushing it back right here with your finger at the same time when you're prying this just to get it off of that lip and then come and do the same thing on this side and while you're doing that move your duck back this way because you don't have much leverage to go forward so move your duck backwards and it'll pop out so you get it over this lip right here so you pry that one side whatever side you want to do first pry one side then do the other side and it should have come out and then that's the bolt right there that's the hole where that single bolt goes to the turbo all right let me get this gas off that's the uh the cam follower down there i'm not replacing that uh some videos suggested that you do since you you got it all out which isn't a bad idea but i'm cool i don't have any i only have maybe maybe 68,000 miles on it you know so I ain't worried about that but doing your fuel pumps you do want to do your fuel um, your fuel pump gasket so that's a must that you do that that the cam follower you know that's up to you personal for preference all right like I said this is the old connector it's the fuel pump on there and this is the new one. You see the difference in the, in the plugs. Like I said, this is the um, um, I think the F90 equivalent. Um, if I remember, I'll put the pictures up so you can at least see them and see where I got it from. Um, I ordered it over overseas online or in the States for these you'd be paying around 1300 for two of them and it came with the the, the uh, new adapters from where I got it from for two of them shipped I paid 700 something dollars and I had to order my own uh, adapters so I'll put those pictures up so you can check those out. All right, I switched out the uh, connector. I looked at some other videos and they said the wire that comes with the harness, with the new adapter, is white. It's a white one and then it's white and green. I'm gonna focus. It's white and green. The other videos, like I said, were other vehicles, and um, they didn't have the exact same wire colors as the 650, but this one is white and green, and I don't know if that's white or brown or what. In the video that I looked at, it had uh, white and red, I believe, or it was a solid red, one or the other, and then the other one was just white. So in that video, it told you to do white to white and then a white green to the white red. But when you have the uh, adapter, when you have it up, when you have the locking me mechanism up, the one on the left is um, wire one, then the other one is wire two. And he went online and pulled up the diagram and BMW says the same thing that when the adapter is up, uh, wire one on that vehicle was red or it said white and green. So mine was like I said, white and green. So that means mine is white and green to the original white and green. So as you see on here with the lock up, that one is white and green. Lock up. White and green. So that's pin one. That's pin two. Now the pump. 
make it a little bigger. You can see, you can see the plate is a little thicker, and the pump itself looks a tad bigger to me. And the spring looks, looks a little bigger to me. I don't know if you can tell in the video. So, taking the original pump out, it wasn't too hard. It was a little snug. Like I said, I ain't, you don't want to bend these too much. That's metal, high pressure. Um, so, we're going to see how hard it is to get in. That's the new fuel gasket on there already. And this side is almost ready to go. All right, I'll come back. One thing I forgot to mention, I used the, uh, I crimped them. So I used the red crimps because they're small wires. And what I like to do when I'm doing crimping, I put a little die electric on the uh, wires. I put a little bit of that on the wire. I just dip it in there just a little bit. You don't have to soak it in there. And you can see what it helps with. That's what I do on my connectors. Just put a little bit. I just dip the wire in there, smooth it out. And then to help seal it, I put a uh, heat shrink on here. And I got my heat done. Just to help it out. All right. All right, so I ran into a little problem. The bottom line, it was about a, it was about a quarter inch off now the original one i had to pull this line down a little bit to get the old pump out when i put this one in it was uh, about a quarter inch off so i don't think i did that when i had to pull it down a little bit i didn't i didn't even pull it down that much it was just a just a tad so i can wiggle the old pump out so i went into a couple of uh i mean a couple of uh facebook groups so I asked a couple of people in there and they, and they ran into the same problem. So it, it obviously wasn't something that I did. So one guy told me I just had to bend this a little bit to get it to line up. So I bent it a little bit, got it to line up, but then I just let the nut uh, seat it. I put it on just good enough to have the nut go in there lined up, tighten it all the way up and it seated it up in there. Uh, like I see that pretty good. I just took it back down just to see how it would look and it's staying up there. So I'm going to put it back up and it should be good to go on this side. All right, so I got it all bolted back together, tightened up. Got those bolts back in there. I showed you that I took out. All right, when I wanted to show you with the wires that I did, I sh showed you how I put them back together. But uh, I had some wire loam I had got off eBay for a different project. So I just cut a piece off and just covered it up on both ends. You know, just to make it look a little better. I don't, can't remember if I, I think I did. I showed these what I crimped them with. This is my wire splicers. This is the crimper. I think I had showed that, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this side back together. All right, I got this side button all back up. <clears throat> this here, that's what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. This is this part here clips onto here. That's the air duct that's going to the turbo. So I took a took my pick, got up on this side and pried it up just a little bit, not too much. You don't want to break it. We pried that up a little bit. Put my finger here and while I'm prying it up I'm pressing it at the same time then once I see that that's got that side got unlocked I do the same thing over on this side and you see it doesn't have much room to pull back this way so I push the air duct the opposite way so when I'm doing that I'm pushing it pulling it that way so <clears throat> I usually I mean I like um, videos that show you step by step and it shows you shows them doing the work but unfortunately i wasn't able to do that for this video and some of my other videos i just show what i'm going to do then i do it and then i come back 
so some of the other videos that uh i saw online they were doing step by step um like uh i think it's fcp uh euro i think that's the correct website they do a step by step and uh they're the ones that showed how to uh rewire it but um I ran into a problem, like I said, with that bottom line, that bottom fuel line. I ran into a problem with that. I probably would have been done. But that set me back maybe about an hour of waiting on getting answers back from people online and people that I emailed and things like that. So, like I said, one guy told said just to uh, bend it, get it lined up, and then let the nut do the work to uh, pull it back up there and seat it. And it looked like it did the job. So... I'm gonna do the other side probably um huh probably another day i'll do the other side but i might just loop it into one video but i mean once you see you got one side done and basically basically you know what to do with the other side like i said there were other videos showing how to do the uh pump but they were basically just replacing the um the factory original pump so this video shows you a 650 uh, N63 and you're upgrading the pump to an S63. Uh, so that's what I did. This is the um, F90 pump. And um, basically sometimes if even if you're replacing the original pump to a, you know, an OEM pump, you still might have to change that connector. Depends on um, if you're getting an older pump. Maybe you find an older pump with the exact match. But if you're finding a new pump that's for yours, then you're going to have to replace the connector on there. So this is just, really it was just that little one problem that I ran into upgrading to an F90 pump on an N63. And as mentioned before, this is the wire loom that I use. I got it off eBay. Um, you can get a smaller one because, like I said, this here is a little bigger for that um, that wire for the fuel pump. But this is the size that I needed for the job that I actually purchased it for. But I just use it for that. Well, you can't see it now, but I just use it for that just to help clean it up a little bit. Um. Oh, that's one of my that's one of my other cars. I did a lot of work on that. I mean, if you want to look at that, I got a couple of other videos uh, posted for the Porsche. So, gotta do this side next. Uh, the guy that told me to bend the um, bend that fuel line, he said, I think he said the passenger side he had more trouble out of. As far as aligning that bottom fuel line but he couldn't remember if it was the passenger side or the driver side so when i get that all torn down and done i'll see what side it was hopefully hopefully this side is easier but bending it wasn't too hard i just got some channel lock pliers just bent it a little bit and then um I went in from like this angle if I wanted to bend it this way some I went in here just bent it a little bit and uh, went like this and bent it up a little bit and that lined it up and it was good to go from that point and that let the nut align on there so that the nut was free to screw on you don't want to try to put that nut on at an, and it's not seated correctly and it's at an angle then you're going to strip those threads so as long as you bend it good enough and that nut goes on there screws on there freely then you should be good to go you can go ahead and let that nut do the work and pull that line up and that's going to bend it on its own when, when you get that nut up in there start screwing that nut on there it'll uh, bring that line up correctly and seat it on its own all right it's been a couple of days it's been about two days so now i'm back to do the uh the passenger side fuel pump uh, this time i'm going to try to let it play out like i mentioned uh the other day 
I like looking at videos where they play it out, showing that they're doing all of the work. And some of my videos, I just show what I'm going to do. I'll cut the camera off and come back and do it. So we'll see how it go. I'll take the support bracket off. So just like on the other side, gotta take this duck off of here also. I don't know if you can see it from that angle where the camera is, but this duck is right over the right side of the fuel pump. So just like the other side, get you a little pick, try to pry open one side of it first. Try to get over there a little. snap back in it's kind of difficult how they position this don't make any sense Come over to the front, try to get it off of the turbo. Now I got a different boat that's in my way.
because it's so tight in there. Can't really reach your finger in there and you don't want to bring it out and end up that boat end up sliding down in the engine somewhere. Get your little magnet. You need me to have one smaller than this one. Set it up. a little tighter on this side. There we go. So you gotta kinda come in like a half circle to get it out of there. Alright, so move some of these wires out of your way. Don't forget to plug them and put them back in their right position. All right. So I'm going to take the pump bolts out. And that size is a five. I think I mentioned it earlier in the video. Like I said, I'm not playing this video out straight or doing the video out straight. So you might hear me repeat some things. I don't know if I said it the first go around or not. And if you can kind of do it evenly. Do one side. You just go back and forth to each side so it kind of come out flush. So this is a, um, this pump rides on that cam. So you don't know if that cam, if, if the lobe is down or up. So if it's up, then that means it's pressing against the uh, pump. So if you just do one side, then it could cock that pump. Let's do each side. And reverse that process when you're putting the pump in. And just screw one side completely down. Right, I feel the bolts are free. So at this point, you can just go ahead and take both of them out. I got my 17 millimeter for the fuel lines. And you might want to get a rag, paper towel, whatever, and put it over it. Because when you undo these lines, you can have some, uh, it's under pressure. So you can have some gas squirt out. Good idea to wear some safety glasses while you're messing with something that has to do with fuel. Definitely don't want that in your eyes. Top 
fuel leaking down. Let's put that in there. So the bottom fuel line is seated pretty well and it's putting a little pressure on it. So when you're taking it out, just pull that bottom fuel line a little bit and uh, that'll get it out. So I'm not throwing these away. I'm keeping, uh, keeping these. There's nothing wrong with them. Then you never know. The ones I've just purchased, you know, might malfunction. So. Nothing wrong with your fuel pumps. I would suggest keeping them. And that's if something goes wrong, you're gonna replace it with the same thing or, you know, from where I ordered it from, it took maybe a week or two. So let's say if this is your only vehicle and you wanna replace it with the same pumps that you just put on, and it might take some time to get them, you still have your old ones so that you can swap these out until you get, you know, your new pumps. Take out the filter, I mean the uh, gasket. Just saw the new gasket. You can pretty much figure out how it look, how it goes on there. Just look at it before you take it off. You can see how it go. One thing about the other side that I didn't think about until afterwards, if you remember, I, I used two wire looms on that side, one for each wire, but the wire loom that's on here is smaller than the one that I have, so even with me splicing it, I might be able to have enough room just to use one, put them both in that one, uh, in that one loom, but we'll see when I get there. So let's take the factory one down a little bit, see where you want to cut it. And I actually meant to cut it at different spots so that both of the um, both of the crimps, both of these crimps won't be at the same spot. So if I do it like that, then that'll give me a little more room instead of me doing it, cutting the wires at the same at the same point. I forgot to do that on that side. But that's what I'm going to do over here. So, let's so say we do it about here. Then I'll do this one down here. That should be enough. And I'll just plug this back onto the original pump. 
this side went down. I'll put this back on. And that's the locking. So if you got a pick, just get your pick, pull it out, and then go in here with it. I don't know if you can see it on the video. But go in here with it and pry that little tab down while you're pulling that out and make it easier instead of putting it with the wires. So let's say you're not uh, replacing this clip like that, that like I'm doing. You want to reuse this. You don't want to put a whole lot of pressure and pulling force on this wire that you mess around and disconnect it from the metal uh, clips in, inside of it. So take that clip out and then use your pick to kind of force it out more then instead of using the wires to pull it. All right, get my wire splicers. See the way these work. It grabs onto the wire and it pulls it. I forgot where I got these from. I probably got it from Radio Shack. Store. Electronic store in the States. They closed years ago. So, don't need a lot of wire, but take your gloves off. You're gonna twist the wires. You don't want any contaminants on the wire. Like any oil, grease, or whatever that you've been messing with. That's pretty good. I don't know if you can see that on the video, like I said, but that's good enough. Get my new adapter. So they give you enough wire. So you figure you can look at the wire that you cut off. cut that much off so let's say I go I'll probably go back behind this little paper and that'll be more than enough that I really need but you rather cut off more well you rather leave more than to cut it off and then it's too short To green. Yeah. So green to green, and the green one you can see it the shorter one, so that means it'll be the longer one on here. wire but it's okay I can come down to about here to cut it down so cut that one down it's lining up the next one I'm going to make that cut now So you can put this in here, and then that gauges how much wire you're going to have out. 
So if you look right here, that's how much wire is going to be left when you splice it. See, it grabs onto it, grabs on the back. The cutters come down, then it's going to pull it apart. Just that simple. Then you got different wire uh, gauge. Like I said, I use a little dielectric. I didn't twist these wires up. Just put a little bit in there. Put a little bit in that one. That'd be good enough. So you're using the red one. And on here it shows you if you're using a red one here. So you got red, blue, then yellow. And this also has uh, wire strippers on it. But I like the tool that I use. Personal preference, I always crimp it twice. this side done white green to white green oh, see I've got a couple of things uh, God, I just thought about it the uh, heat shrink Put that sleeve on. Guess I got to do a new one. Almost forgot. So I got different sizes in here. The one that I used was this one. But I think it was kind of big. See, I fit over this. Yeah, this won't even fit over it, so I gotta use that one. So I just fold it in half, so I have two of them with equal length. So you want to slide this on first. Slide that down. Good. 
green to green. Now I initially was going to solder the wires, but uh, like I said, I looked at a uh, different video and he said you don't want to solder it because you get vibration in there and might uh, mess up the solder, you know, down the road or whatever. So, which I mean may or may not be true, but I just decided to go ahead and follow his advice and just crimp the wires. crimps, do a little pull, a little tug, make sure the wire don't come out, like it's crimped good, then you got your heat shrink on here, and bring that up, get my heat gun, this one got a lot of different settings on it, it's a Wagner, had it for a couple of years. So that's the setting I got it on. You can cut it up. Oh, right here. And you just want to kind of feel to have it in the metal. Kind of go back and forth with it to try to even out the heat distribution. You're just shrinking it, you know, trying to burn it. So the reason I wanted to use a smaller one is because the ends are kind of open and the way I would have liked it to be is, you know, they shrunk all the way down to the wire, but I guess as long as it's closed in on the middle part, it should be fine. That's up far enough, so I can pull it up some. That should be good. And uh, don't use an open flame. You're messing with your fuel line. You got your fuel lines right here. You might have some vapor. So messing with open flame might not be a good idea. You can test that out if you want to. I'm not.
All right, that looks good. When I cut this off, it's gonna go into the cool down state so to get all of that heat out of it. So that might run for about a minute or two. All right. So now, I can see if I can use the original white aluminum, or I can just cut this down here and then add my new or a bigger white aluminum. All right, I paused it for that because I didn't want to show another 10 minutes of just me messing with the wire loom. So what I did was I cut the original loom under where I spliced it at. I cut it there and then I just added my wire loom and overlapped it all the, almost all the way down to where the wire is coming out of this box at. So that looks better. So that's just trying to Messing with the original loom, it kind of the wire kind of stuck out because, like I said, it's a little smaller. So I just got the new one, cut it at the bottom, like I said, and just overlapped it so that looks better. All right, that part is done. Get the pump. Here's the new pump. These protective caps on it for the threads. So like I said in the other part of the video, when that guy said the passenger side was harder, it like, looked like he was right, but the passenger side might be a little more difficult because the top isn't lining up either, but it might line up better when I um, bolt it down. I'll just take uh, another little nut in here, just like on the other side. So we take that out just to give me a little more leeway.
that give me a little more play. So, if you order new bolts for the fuel pump, you know that you know how some bolts come with the uh, the light the Loctite little ring on it. So, instead of ordering new bolts, I'm just gonna put a little bit on it. That's good enough. And it's just to help it stop it from moving out with the vibration. So you can see it was already some on there. So I'm just putting a little, a little bit on it. So I'm already on there from the factory. And I don't know if you can see my head, but I got a headlight on. And I got LED beam up here at the top. I don't know if it's showing good or not. There it is. Got a little light light bar up here. It's two separate lights that I can take off of there. But you use that, and it goes. So you got a little soft little sponge kind of type type of coating on it. So just to help with lighting. Oh, I'll put that back in the same spot. Now. All right, got both of those started. You can feel it's a little pressure pushing it outwards. So like I said, just walk it down. might look like I'm straining when I do it but I'm not I'm not over tightening I like to get down when it's tight I tighten it up a little bit and then I come back and just give it another reassurance snug but like I said I put a little Loctite on there so should be good all right so on the other side the uh the top line it went right in passenger side you gotta do a little finessing with both of these lines What am 
gonna do, I'm gonna put that little nut back on. spots in here in the line that I can try to bend out it's so tight in here it's kind of scary I don't like bending this line to be honest with you I'd be afraid it's gonna mess it up put a hole in it or something Take that little bolt back out, give me some leverage, screw it in, let the nut pull it, and then go from there. This little nut is just probably just help it from vibration. But if I can't get it back, get it back aligned on here, it's not that super big of a deal. did another little pause just to save a little video length so like I said I took it a loose from in here as you see there's a little nut in there to give me a little a little more play I pulled it use my channel locks just to kind of help align it and it screwed in then I just used and let the nut pull it all the way in kind of want to put some uh, Loctite on these threads too, but there wasn't any on the original pump. Like I don't see any evidence of there being any Loctite on here. So I guess it'd be okay. This one just get over it and you can see how so let's say this is the pump this is the line is kind of like this 
and it's kind of down. So I'm gonna pull it up, then I'm gonna get in the front of the car, try to line it up. And you can probably do it on the side. Yeah, it looks good. And you want to do it to the point to where the nut freely screws on. Pause it again, just to save some video. All right, so I took the pump back out. I got the top line, uh, I got that on there good. I was able to uh, tighten that one up. But the bottom line, the reason I took it back out is I pulled it here. I pulled it, uh, kind of, well, I didn't push it down, but I kind of pulled it because the pump is sitting here and the line is here so with the pump installed I couldn't get it to come up closer I could move it this way up and down left and right but I couldn't move it for for the, closer to it because it's hitting the pump so I took the pump back out and by me doing that it may have brought it here so now when I install the pump back then I can align it the way I want to since I already got it forward some so that Hopefully that gave me a little leverage in that sense. So pull it up a little more. And this line is, is, is real short. It's short going right to the fuel rail. It's not that long. So let's see what that gave me. Might have to move it out of my way. Oh, no, it went in. But, uh, yeah, so now I gotta move it out of my way to put the, to install, to reinstall the, uh, the pump. So this might be, this might be good. May have worked. So I'm just gonna put a little more Loctite on it. not a professional with this in any type of way I'm just a DIYer I look at a lot of things on my own see if I can do it small things like this I'll do it but I'm not cracking open the engine way above my skill set where I was originally under it but now the legs is just gonna be on top I don't feel like going through all that 
right there. So it is closer. So now I just do the little alignment that I did first time. It's a little tough little line too. Is when I took the pump out to push that line forward, the nut got stuck at the bottom. So I'm just trying to get that nut back up. I hope I don't have to take it back down again. This has been about a, I don't know, probably about an hour, hour and a half time lapse from when I stopped the video. So it took me a minute to uh, figure it out. And so I had to use my big adjustable wrench, channel locks. So see right up in here see where I took a couple of big bites while I was grabbing it at. I don't know if I'm holding this camera in the right position or not. But right up in here, I don't know if you can see where I was grabbing it at with the channel locks. Trying to straighten it out, trying to get, really trying to get some of them bands out of there because them bands were preventing me from bending it where I wanted it at. When I was doing all my bands, it was bending it basically down here. But if I straighten that out a little bit, then I was able to bend it here with my big wrench. And now you see it's seated pretty good. So when I tighten it up, that'll be a lot better than what it was. And I also had to do the same to the top. You can see some bike marks up there. Did the same up there. So now I'm pretty much happy with it. So get it started getting back together. So the passenger side is the harder side. I didn't have this much of a problem on the passenger on the driver's side. And uh, might not have to, but just for peace of mind. Put a little bit on there. That was too much. Let 
the screw and going freely, so I probably didn't need it. But just for peace of mind, because I had to go through so much to get it lined up. But you see it screwing on there freely, so you won't have a problem. That screwed on freely too. So you probably don't have to put any Loctite on it. It's probably just me being paranoid. Tighten that up good. Don't want the gas coming out on the hot engine. I had a couple of plugs coming loose. This is like an injector plug. I'll put some tape down in there. Just to hold it. might shorten this video up that's what I really didn't want I didn't want a two hour long video just changing the fuel pumps because most of that time is just figuring out how to do it other than the actual work that's why I paused the video right I let it play out while I was trying to figure it out that would have probably been another additional hour and a half I was contemplating taking the viewer uh, rail completely out and try and try to finesse that wire. I mean, the fuel uh, line. I was going to take it all the way out, but glad I didn't. Make sure everything is buttoned up on here. Make sure nothing mistakenly came out. Like that one wire did. Check the wires are down. Get that out. All right. Let's hook up the fuel pump. This will only go on one way, so I'm just making sure it don't go on that way. So. That's the way it go. Lock it in. That's good. This little nut. Don't have to put it back in, but I uh, took it out because it gave me a little wiggle room for the top fuel line. good enough it's just holding the fuel line keep it from vibrating all right I'm gonna button all this back up All right, I got everything all buttoned back up. So now I'm started up. And got this little camera. I got this off Amazon. So when I start it up, I'm gonna be looking for, see if there's any leaks.
around this here. Everything looks good. Take this off the mount. That's a better uh, look at the light. So the light comes off. Also got this off of uh, Amazon. I'm doing the... Uh, when I had the intercoolers put on, they had to modify the mount. I think it would just be some kind of round part up here somewhere. They had to cut all of that off. <clears throat> I need to clean my engine bay up. But everything's looking good. So... Maybe today or tomorrow, I'm going to do some uh, data logs. Now, I had a problem with um, Boot Mod 3. I can't get any uh, gauge readings. I've been going back and forth with, with them for about two weeks. They can't figure it out. Um, one, I emailed them and after so many days... I even give them another email and they ask me what can they help me with like I've been emailing y'all for two weeks about this and now y'all acting like I'm a new person so I'm getting a little frustrated with frustrated with that uh, I went on Facebook and there is another guy who isn't getting any readings with boot mod 3 and what he used was a beamer link app so I downloaded and uh, paid for that it was like forty dollars for full of functions so i'm gonna do data logs with that and hopefully um my tuner can get good readings with that i'm gonna get retuned with uh boot mod 3 the person i had tuned it before they used jb4 as a piggy piggyback and he didn't know how to opti optimize the uh stage 2 turbos so i found someone else to use boot mod 3 so hopefully i'll be burning rubber or get a, a better um, horsepower because with the jb4 and the stage two he didn't know how to do it like i said so i only had i was only around 560 horsepower and that's way too low for all of the work that i put into it i should be over 650 
with all the, with everything that I've done with it. I think I should be over 650. So we'll see how it goes. But thanks for looking. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video wasn't too long for a simple job. I mean, it wasn't too simple, but hopefully this will help you out and uh, your project will go faster than mine did. Thanks for watching.